Good evening and welcome to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for race four of the Heart Canada campaign, a 175 lapper at Sutherland Automotive Speedway. This, this one third of a mile progressively banked oval should provide some great racing as Caitlin Sang out of New York, the 2017 Hark Pro Series champion is going to lead the field to the green alongside her. It's the seven of Cassie Gerdes as the 07 gets a nice jump on the start and manages to clear the 7 down through turn 2. Casey Lester trying to pin the 7 car to the outside, but the 07 car, the pole sitter, away well. Tony Tavolaris had a good qualifying effort, but true to self, it wouldn't be long before he made contact with another car as he nearly runs over Fred Flintstone. Good save overall by both of these drivers. Cassie Gertis has not had a very good start. She's gotten stuck on the outside and is now being overtaken by Dan Bouchard. But it looks like Dan Bouchard has a problem. He's got a tire going down and he gracefully holds that car down on the bottom of the track to let the field go by. He would fall a lap down after heading to the pits. A disappointing start to what looked like could have been a great day for that 037. Three wide racing a bit further back between William Brock, Kyle Collins, and Bridget Pitt as they all squeeze one another and, and uh, battle for uh, line supremacy there. Spencer Fullerton and Max Anderson uh, quietly waiting in the wings um, behind them to see if something happens on board Spencer Fullerton as Brock and Collins nearly, they actually did make contact there, slip up the track. BL uh, Benoit Le Lothair Irvine uh, looking to make some passes on the inside makes a, a good effort of it as Spencer Fullerton tries to follow him by. On lap 14, Casey Lester would try and fail to get the lead from Sang. Uh, made a move on the inside but could not get it done and Sang slots back into the position. At the back of the pack with the leaders rapidly approaching, Gallo completely misjudges the corner and clatters Pericles and they both go spinning up the track and into the wall. These two had some of the most ill-handling cars to begin with and their days go from bad to worse as they fall a lap down at the caution flag. Bouchard, however, is just barely spared from going two laps down by this timely caution. They all ended up stacking up as they slowed down for the caution as uh, 32 cars try and fit in one small space. Thomas and Anderson going, would end up going for a spin and some of the cars at the back of the field must not have gotten accurate info from their spotters because they came piling in off of two way too hot. Collins and Brock both get significant damage with William Brock retiring from this incident. On the restart, Lester would follow closely behind Sang, look to the inside there briefly. Sang held it well and Sang taking a defensive line down into turn three. Lester's gonna give it a try around the outside. It was a bold strategy. No one's been able to make it work so far today and it isn't working so far as Nozomi would end up getting uh, a position from Lester due to uh, his misplaced efforts there. Um, behind them at the uh, tail end of the top 10, some very close racing between Thomas, uh, Yepes, and Smith. Smith is one of the biggest movers so far. He's up 11 spots from his 23rd place starting spot. Less than 25 laps after the restart, and Caitlin Sang has already caught the tail end of the field. She pulled a 2.3 second lead over her competitors, but that lead is starting to be cut as she approaches the traffic. If we stay green, it's going to be vital for the leaders to be efficient at slicing and dicing their way through the traffic to stay in front. Ten laps later, and Irvine has managed to keep himself on the lead lap, getting by Bouchard. But Sang is really struggling to make a move, and Nozomi's caught all the way up and is now up the inside of the 07 car. I don't think anyone can doubt that Sang may have the fastest car here. She got the pole after all, and in clean air and a free racetrack, that car is fast. But Nozomi seems to have the more adaptable setup. Nozomi was the points leader heading into today and seems posed to extend that lead. Her teammate Fred Flintstone also looks to have excellent pace. He qualified with an identical time to Nozomi and is in, and it's currently in Nozomi Epic Racing 1-2. Irvine's been quite elusive a lap. Nozomi shoves him out of the way, but oh, they get into the wall there. And Nozomi sent uh, for a couple of wall hits. Fred Flintstone's compromised and here comes Sang on the bottom of the track. They're, they're three wide as Fred Flintstone tries desperately to get by those lap cars. Sang forcing 
is still forcing the issue three wide on the bottom, but Sang gets turned by Irvine up into the wall. Sang washed up the track a little bit there, uh, pushing too hard, trying to snap the lead away. It's been tricky to pass on this track, but Nozomi is going to go back to the lead. What a wild few laps as Nozomi started uh, that one as the leader and, uh, and ends it as one, but everything in between uh, was quite a shuffle. Uh, Nozomi would end up getting a good restart and pulled away. I'm honestly surprised given all the damage that car has. It'll be interesting to see whether or not she can maintain that pace through the race or whether or not there's any cut tires that that 99 will have to deal with. Behind them, Brian Hart and Sang race for fifth place with Pericles one lap down on the outside. Sang and Pericles would get together through three and four, making hard contact with the wall. Sang would keep going, but Pericles would pit a few laps later for repairs and hood removal, falling another two laps down as the day for the 84 goes from bad to worse. A bit of a stack up, trying to get around Pericles as Smith runs it up the track and bogs down. Pitt in his quarter panel, but they do hang on. Pitt sends it in three wide into turn one and washes up the track on quarter exit. This is very close quarters racing, but maybe a bit too close as Pitt gets sent upside down after contact with Smith and Pericles. They race back to the line, nearly wreck again there as Sang and Pericles get together. Let's take another look at this as Pitt and Smith squeezed together, Pitt up the track into Pericles, and Pericles hit Pitt at just the right angle to flip that 77 car as Pitt, as, as close as this track has to a fan favorite, is out on lap 81. As the drivers tried to sort themselves out under yellow, Bouchard came up to get past the leaders of some of the other lap cars and crashed with Irvine, a welcome sight to the leaders, I'm sure, but quite a strange incident. Irving would opt now to pit, while Bouchard would fall another two laps down. Ike Durbin would also pit for a mechanical issue under the yellow and fall two laps down, and Pericles' time, uh, Pericles' team would decide to retire his mangled 84 car. Nozomi would get away well on the restart. It's Cassie Gerdes in second, while Jeffrey Fingai and Brian Hart are on screen fighting for third. Fingai in the number 92 going to snatch that position away from the 35 as he's climbed all the way back from the back couple rows of the grid. Now on board Zachary Fitzwater Sr. as he comes up on these two. Brian Hart gets into the 92, turns him down the track, but the Finn guy somehow manages to save the car, uh, manages to do a little bit of a pass in the grass maneuver there, uh, hitting the grass, coming on track and managing to hold on to the position for now. Very impressive uh, driving uh, by the veteran Jeffrey Finn guy there as Zachary Fitzwater um, waits a little bit to see what happens uh, further here. Nelson and Vanson would argue over real estate next as Vanson runs Nelson down to the bottom and Nelson made sure to show her displeasure with a little punt into turn three, forcing Vanson offline. There's been no shortage of great short track racing and some tempers today. How the tables have turned in this race. 40 laps ago, Nozomi and Sang were racing each other for the lead, and now Sang appears to be limping that car around, and Nozomi puts her a lap down. Devastating drive for the 07 after starting on pole. Nelson seems to be driving a bit angry right now. Comes on the back of Yepes, who is using a midline to defend, but she has none of it and dumps him uh, onto the straightaway, bringing out the yellow. Yepes would get away with it well, avoiding damage and getting on the loud pedal in time to stay on the lead lap. On lap 114, they went back green. Nozomi again got away well as second place Cassie Gerdes makes quick work of Sang as she tries to track down Nozomi. She's got Gallo in the way as well. More Tavularis related contact as he gets into the side of Tyler Faber. This is a tightly packed group racing for 14th. All of these cars have some sort of damage from the racing today. The team mechanics and their body shops are going to be in demand after this one. Just look at some of the rear ends of, uh, and sides of these cars. Lucina Gallo, despite falling a lap down earlier on in the day, has kept pace with Nozomi, is going to get past her. 
that's gotta hurt for Gallo. She fell a lap down early on due to a poor qualifying effort and an incident near the rear of the field that caught her out early on. But she very clearly has a fast race car that can compete with the leaders. Sylvain LaSavage is in the middle of a Discover Alaska sandwich and he gets into the side of Nelson and turns her. Might have had uh, some help from a bump from Will Hoyt. Faulkner had nowhere to go and got into the back of the 96 as well. Gallo comes in hot, but for uh, but uh, it's worth it as she gets her lap back. Faulkner would retire from the race due to this. Casey Lester would also blow an engine under yellow and retire, and Flintstone would come in with a vibration and change his right side tires, drop, dropping from 6th to 19th. On lap 135, a Nozomi would again get away well, but she's under a bit more pressure without lap cars between her and Gertis. But the real battle is on for third, with Brian Hart trying to get by Fitzwater and Fitzwater's teammate Thomas right on both of their heels. What is it today with teammates being so evenly matched and close on track? First, it was Flintstone and, and Nozomi, and now it's Fitzwater and Thomas. Hart would get by Gertis and start hunting down Nozomi. This may be the first real challenge Nozomi has had in over 50 laps. With 30 laps to go, the top eight have dispatched the lap traffic. It's Nozomi and Hart, with Thomas third, then Gertis and Fitzwater. Edmonton race winner Spencer Fullerton six sixth, with Jeffrey Finguy and Al Lagasse fighting over seventh. As Flintstone, you might have seen Flintstone get put into the wall in a, in a tightly contested battle there as his... Uh, his day, he continues to collect a little bit more damage on that F1 car. Just outside the top 10 is currently the hottest battle on the track with Anderson, Faber and Smith hoping to cap off the night well. All of these guys have had very busy uh, nights in the midfield. Thomas, closing in on Hart, gets into the rear of the number 35, narrowly holds onto her own car, and that's gonna cost her precious time is the window to challenge for the win is closing. Thomas sits third with Brian Hart closing now closing in on Nozomi. Nozomi, having caught lap traffic, tried the outside, an unconventional line, and it is not paying off as here comes Brian Hart, the rookie from Montreal, Quebec. Could he become the first rookie winner of the Hart Canada Series? Well, he's going to make the move stick for now as he clears number 99 and tries to get by the lap car of Kyle Collins. The leaders really stuck in a gaggle of lap traffic now. Brian Hart stuck on the outside of Collins, but Thomas and Nozomi are also running wide and uh, are on the outside of the track. I think tire wear is starting to kick in pretty hard. Fitzwater's trying to join the podium spots. Does he have anything left for Thomas and Hart? Just two and a half laps to go now. Brian Hart's looking good, but he's coming up on some lap traffic in the form of Flintstone and Nelson, and he gets up into the wall. A big unforced error by the 35, and here comes Fitzwater to try and capitalize. Fitzwater on his bumper, and with a lunge down into three, as we come to the white flag, Fitzwater slides up but avoids contact, and Brian Hart leads across the stripe. Can he hold on? He runs it deep into one, and Fitzwater got it just about perfect. He almost clears him down into three and holds a firm, protective inside line. It's going to be Fitzwater with his second win of the year and the fourth of his career as he leads just one lap all night to snatch it away on lap 175. Congratulations to him. What an amazing charge from 30th on the grid. Second place for Hart. That's got to hurt for him. He really could have had that one in the bag if it wasn't for that error, but this will net him good points. Fullerton very quietly snuck in a podium after starting 31st. Nozomi led the most laps but could not hold on in the late stages, falling to fourth and Al Lagasse with a solid fifth place effort. J.F. Finguy climbed to sixth at race end, followed by Thomas and his son Jeffrey. Uh, Cassie Gertis and Lucas Knight rounded out the top 10. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it's Fitzwater back atop the standings, closely followed by Nozomi. These two were already near the top coming into this race, and they've reaffirmed themselves as championship challengers. Hart now sits as a top rookie by a significant margin in third, with his nearest competitor in ninth. Fullerton and Faber are 20 points back of the leaders in fourth and fifth. Knight and Finguy are the only other drivers within a one-race striking distance of the leaders. 
Next time out, we head all the way over to Montreal for what should be a very exciting and challenging 100-mile road course race at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve.